Back on the sports max zone, Craig Brathwaite scored 72, his 23rd half century, to lead the West Indies to 252 all out in their first innings of the second and final test against Sri Lanka in Gaul. Off spinner Ramesh Mendes logged his first FIFA in test cricket, finishing with 6 for 70 of 34.2 overs. At Stump, Sri Lanka were 46 for 2, with both opener Dimush Karuna Ratni and uh, number three batsman Oshada Fernando departing via the runout route. Scores in the match after three days of this rain affected affair, Sri Lanka 2 of 4 and 46 for 2, the West Indies 253. Um, George and Mariah, um, a vastly different performance from the West Indies in this test match. They were pretty poor in the opening test, but they have shown a lot of fight here. Yes, yeah, so I will have to say uh, that there is a massive improvement, so I agree with you, both with bat and ball, not only in one department, which is very important because, you know, it's not only one aspect of the game that win you matches. What I have to say, though, is also the manner in which they're fielding. Impressive, because the first two wickets that they got were due to runouts. So it's a plus and something to look forward to. But still, I wouldn't get ahead of myself and say, all right, we're going to be able to draw this series just yet because we know how within um, a couple minutes, a couple balls, the position that sometimes our Windies players find themselves in that have us really, really concerned. But so far, I think, you know, an improvement from what we saw, the embarrassment that we saw in the first test. Mm. Gives credence it does their performance so far to those mm -hmm. to, to the school of thought which says they would have played better in the first test had they had the advantage of playing a warm up match before. We all know that that was rained out, yes. and uh, they didn't just go into the match undercooked. Uh, undercooked means a physical state. Uh, under, they, they were underprepared mentally as well because they didn't have the simulation of going through a practice match to get them mentally g'd up. Uh, the experience of the first test, notwithstanding the fact that the defeat was chastening and yet another chastening defeat for the West Indies, if you draw a line from perhaps the fifth day, the final day of a rain-affected first test, through the first three days of this match so far, you would say that the West Indies have been competitive. Where they weren't competitive were over the first two or so days of the first test. When they batted awfully, then they bowled rubbish uh, in, in real terms, and the game was taken away from them there. So they have put together some good sessions and have been competitive and they've been competitive so far in this match. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll temper my expectations though. I want them to continue being competitive. Whatever mm -hmm. the result is, I'll take it. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy already that even if they lose, and I don't expect that they will from here because they have the, their destiny in their own hands. Even if they lose, it won't be a uh, an embarrassing defeat. And you know, I would say to the batsmen, y'all got starts. You know, you got starts. 73, Craig, we expect 100. A couple of them got 30s. Why not make the 50? So for me as a batsman, the hardest thing is getting a start. Then when you get the start, come on, just bat long. It's, it's what you've been practicing for. It's what you've been training for. And that always gets to me when I see the batsmen getting 20 and 30 and just not going on to make that 50 or capitalizing on the momentum that they would have built up with their partner. Yeah, a lot of the West Indies good performances in recent years have come after bad performances. It's almost like... Um, you know, a, a defeat or a bad right, effort, you know, hurts them so much that it gees them up to do better the next time. George has a good point that they were um, short of practice and went into the opening test match without proper preparation with match conditions and the, and the tour itself. But there are a lot of uh, bad performances for the West Indies in the past that uh, have no explanation like that. <laughs> so that, that was part of the reason, I think, why they did badly in the first test. But sometimes the West Indies need no reason to perform badly in, in test cricket. And um, the consistency or the inconsistency that has plagued West Indies cricket for over two decades now continues to show itself. You, you heard George just now hesitating um, to suggest <laughs> that the West Indies in our position that they could win this test match. Yes. And he, he, he made sure not to that. say that because he knows that this West Indies team, they don't operate like that. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. They'll have you say something today and look like a fool tomorrow. Yeah. And look, uh, the numbers we pointed out when you weren't here, yeah. uh, during the first test, we pointed out on this show that Rakim Kono's figures, if you drew a line from the two tests against Sri Lanka and the Caribbean, and the one against South Africa and the Caribbean, and the first one over there in Gaul now, well, the first one that went, his figures were accumulative five wickets for almost 600 runs. Mm. That, that's impossible. You, you are effectively carrying someone in the team who's not giving you anything with the ball as a specialist bowler, and then his limitations in the field again. It, it was bad for the young man to be presented in that light and bad for the West Indies as a collective, and one of the biggest marketing names still in cricket. Look at where I've gone. 
to qualify what the West Indies are. Mm. One of the big marketing names, because there's no doubt that West Indies in Test cricket is one of the biggest names in the history of Test cricket. Although our cricket, test-wise, hasn't been good for more than 20 years. And just remember, the marketing comes from the past. It has nothing to do with for where sure. we are right sure. now. And you know, the emotion of the fans is something that is stirred constantly by the failure of the West Indies team. And people talk about, oh, yeah. uh, talk about you know, bad selections and the bad coaching, a bad captaincy. And I've, I've long believed for, for over two decades now that the West Indies issues or the decline of West Indies cricket is is a multifaceted issue. It's not just one thing. Um, I was curious to note that in this current test match, there are seven Barbadians in this West Indies team. Mm -hmm. Now, if Courtney Brown was still the chairman of selectors, you would hear that Courtney Brown has picked all of these Barbadians. Picked his friends. Yes. Oh, and, 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 too. and that the, 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 the selections, the selectors are messing up West Indies yeah. cricket. Yeah. This is a completely solid different panel. And solid solid point. Solid solid point. But there are seven Barbadians in the team. Solid point. And, and there, are no, there are no Barbadian selectors on the panel. Yeah, solid point. Mm. Yeah. Break right. time? It's mm -hmm. break time, else yeah, we yeah. could go on and on. <laughs> Christmas is a time and a season. But even more than these things, it's a state of mind. It's a time to cherish peace and share goodwill. A time to be courageous now, in the present. A time to be brave and hopeful for the future. It's a reminder that we're all here for something other than ourselves. In 2021, we ensured you had some of the most exceptional sporting content available. We brought joy into your homes and shared special moments with you as our region triumphed on the global stage through sport. Let me, and me, and me, and, and us. Thank you for supporting and sharing those moments. And for allowing Sportsmax to be your first choice. You are our most prized asset. And from us here at the Home of Champions, we wish you all a merry and magical Christmas and all the blessings that come with it. As we look forward to 2022, may the lights of this season illuminate the coming of another year. Merry Christmas, everyone.